If you'd like to learn how to use the changed event to change a GUI when a value changes, keep watching and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Welcome to Roblox Snippets. Uh, in order to create the example uh, that I showed you at the beginning of the video, the first thing we need to do is to create a GUI for us to use. And we're going to do that over here in our starter GUI. So if you come over and left click on starter GUI, and next to that there's a plus sign, and we are looking initially for a screen GUI. So if that does not show up in your list initially, it should, click in the search box and start typing screen GUI and it will show up below. All right, so go ahead and click on that and that basically puts a layer over our screen that we can add things to. So we'll leave it at screen GUI so you can see how that works. Now, inside of the screen GUI, we're going to create a frame. So left click on screen GUI and click on the plus and in here you will find frame so go ahead and click on the frame and a white box should show up in the corner up here. All right. And inside of this frame, and the reason we use frames is if you are constructing your own GUI and say you wanted to have um, scores in this frame and down here you might want to have uh, special abilities and other things or buttons, then you can move them around in the screen uh, to divide your screen up. So that's why we use a frame. So to this frame we're going to add a text label so click on frame and then the plus sign and you should find text label in the list so go ahead and click on text label all right now we we'll leave these two screen gui and frame uh, named as they are so you can see what they are but we'll change the uh, text label to be gold label all right so we're going to represent gold in here and at the moment this doesn't look very nice so we're going to change a couple of properties uh, of these the frame and the label in order to get it to sit correctly on the screen so firstly click on the frame and we are going to uh, go down into the properties so scroll down initially and the first one that we're going to make a change to is the anchor point so when you have an anchor point it basically means that at the moment the anchor point is up here in the, the top left hand corner um, and we're going to move it into the middle. So when we put it in the middle of the screen, it appears correctly. So let's uh, click on our expand anchor point and in X, we're going to put in here 0.5. All right, and that will make our um, anchor point in the middle of that frame uh, because the values go from zero on the left over to one over here. Alright, so anchor point X, uh, and don't worry about how it looks, it, uh, you'll see how it pans out in just a minute. We'll come down and we'll now move it uh, into position before we uh, change the size. So find position and expand it, and you'll notice that we have two X and Y with two zeros. So expand the X, and you have a scale, and you have an offset. Now when we use scale, we use this if you want to... Uh, have things display correctly on different size screens or devices and it's probably good practice to use scale most of the time and the number that is halfway between 0 and 1 is of course 0.5 so we'll put in here 0.5 and that will move our our uh, frame into the middle of the screen now in terms of size we're going to make the frame invisible so we'll actually make the frame as wide as the screen and we can do that under the size. So under size, just below where we changed our position, we have a similar setup here where we have X. And I'll just move this up so that you can see this a bit clearer. There we go. Okay, frame. All right, down here, uh, and we are working in the size. Sorry about that. All right, we have our scale and we have our off offset for X and Y. So we're going to change the offset to be 0 for X. And now we're going to change the scale to be 1. And it should spread across the screen like this. Okay, so that's our frame. Now we don't really want that background. We're just using this to hold our label in here. So we'll come back up to the top. And you can find here the background transparency. Click in the box where it says zero and change this to be one and it will disappear.
So now we're just left with our label up in the top corner. All right, so now we're going to do a similar thing with our label. So come up here into the Explorer window, click on Gold Label, and we'll come back up to the top where we have our anchor point, and we're going to change the anchor point X to be 0.5, and that will put it in the middle. Then we're going to come down and change the position, and we'll change that to uh, in our X, so expand X, and we'll change it to 0.5 also, and that will bring it into the middle of the screen. All right, so the next thing, we, we want to bring it down just a little bit. Um, so with the position, with the Y position uh, for the label, just expand that one, and we're going to put in here 0 0.05, Okay, we'll just move it down a little bit. You could move it down uh, perhaps just point 0.1 altogether. It's totally up to you as to, to how you want to position this uh, on the screen, but that's probably pretty good at the moment. Now we'll uh, change the background and the, the text as well uh, for our gold label. So initially come up to the, the top here again with our gold label, and we're going to change our background color. So click on the white box and a color wheel will come up and you can pick a color. I'm just simply going to move mine over this way to become completely black and then click on OK. And while we're here, we'll also change the border color. Uh, I'm going to change mine. So we'll slide this over to be white and then you can pick a border color that you like. I'll just make mine a blue over here like in the example and click on OK. And so we can see it a little bit clearer. Uh, we will just come down to our uh, border size and I'm going to make mine 5 so that it stands out and now we'll come down and look at the text because it's disappeared at the moment uh, because it's uh, it's black at the moment so down the bottom the first thing we'll do is scroll down till you find text color 3 and we want to left click on that and move it across so that it becomes a lighter color like this and you can leave it at white or um, I'll make mine a gold type color and click on OK. Now this is going to be for gold so just above this in the text box change this to say gold and you can put something like that. And now to make it bigger you can either click on the text scale box which will make it as big as it can possibly be to fit in the box or you can come to the text size and if you click in here you can slide the slider up till you get a size that you you think is good all right so there are two options as to how you make your how big you make it however I'll just uh, click on text scale for now and uh, that's probably enough uh, for us to make use of in order to start coding so we'll get started on that next okay so now we have this gold up here and we need to give each of our players a variable that we can track for each of them. So we're going to create a main script over here in Service Script Service. So left click on Service Script Service and click on the plus and then click on Script. And we will change the name of this to be Main Script. And we'll get rid of the Hello World inside. Now we're going to do this for each player that enters the game. So we'll set up this code first, added, and then a colon, connect, function, and a set of brackets, and inside of this set of brackets type the word player, then move over one and hit enter. And this will, each time a player enters the game, any code inside of here will run. Now we're also going to uh, make sure the player's character is loaded as well before we try to do anything, just to make sure we try to avoid errors. So the way we do that is to say player dot character added and then a colon and hit connect function a set of brackets and type character inside here. Move over one and hit enter and I'll just get rid of these screens. So it should look like this. Now uh, the reason that we're using changed here and uh, after a while when uh, when you initially start making games you may use leader stats in order to put up some things on the screen but at some point uh, you're going to find that leader stats won't work very well for you uh, because it, it always places things up in this top left corner and you can only have so many and then it just sort of gets all crowded um, so at some point you're going to start wanting to make your own GUIs and put them wherever you like 
And when you do that, um, instead of using leader stats, you can create your own folder um, for your variables and then use, uh, as I said, changed to make the changes to those um, amounts. So initially we're going to create a folder. So local and we'll call this player vars. All right, short for player variables equals and we'll create a folder. So instance dot new and then a set of inverted commas and we'll say folder. All right, this is we're going to hold any values inside here for our player. Now this folder will get parented to each player. So now you can parent um, uh, by typing playervares.parent equals player. However, you can also do it here by putting a comma and typing player. And that will parent uh, a copy of this folder to each player. We do, however, need to name this. So we will type playervars.name. So we're naming our folder equals and we'll say player vars right as a shortened version now we create a uh, number value for our player gold so player gold will equal and we'll create an instance dot new of a number value and we will parent that to the player vars folder so it will be put inside of that folder for us to use player gold dot name and we're going to simply call it, uh, well, we'll call it player gold. And then we'll set the value for that. So player gold dot value will equal zero. So they'll start with no gold. All right, so in case you haven't done this and you don't need to play, but I will um, just show you in case this is new to you. Um, I'll come up and click on file and save and I'll show you what that code does. So Right, so there's no leader stats however if you come up to players in the explorer window and expand it you'll find your character so click on your character name and here we go underneath the player name we have these other folders plus the one that we just created and if you click on the drop down you'll see hashtag which means it's a value with player gold and if you go ahead and click on player gold you'll see we've set its value to zero so that's what that code did there that we just did so go ahead and click on stop and we have that value ready to use. Now the next thing we'll do is to create a part just in the workspace in order to um, give our player some gold. Okay, so come up to uh, the top and click on the home tab and we'll insert a part. So click on part and over here we've got uh, our part. Now we're going to call this our trigger part. Right, a trigger part is something that uh, when the player touches it, something happens. And we'll make a couple of changes to its properties. So down the bottom, change it to a color that you like. Uh, I'll just make mine red. Um, and then we will uh, come down and change the size. All right, and we'll change it to be, um, we'll just do it in here. Uh, just say 5 by 0.5 by 5. And that will give us a tile uh, sort of thing in front of us. And then down here, make sure you click on Anchored so that it stays positioned here. Can Collide can be on or off, but Anchored needs to be on as it can cause problems with the code. Now, we'll move that just out a little bit. All right, to this trigger part, we'll now add a script. So left click on trigger part and then add a script. And we'll change its name to be Trigger Script. And get rid of our Hello World. Alright, so in here we're going to write code that when the player touches this part, it's going to change this value in here for us for whichever player it is that touched the part. Alright, we'll start off by getting or creating a variable for the part itself. So we'll call it trigger and it will be equal to script.parent. Alright, because the script is here and its parent is part, so this is the trigger part. Now, next we're going to create a variable called db. Now, db is a Boolean value, so true or false. And we use this to control how many times the, uh, the code is allowed to run. And you'll see how to use that in just a moment. We'll drop down a couple of lines. And this is where we will create a function for the touched event. So firstly, trigger 
all right that's the part and we put a dot and the event that we want to attach to that trigger part is the touched event and you'll notice it says here touched with a little lightning bolt so that means that it is an event that's happening so when the part or the event of touching the part happens we want to add a colon and connect all right a function to this and we'll add a set of brackets and inside of these brackets we're going to type the word hit now this is a parameter and it will represent which part of a player or character touched the trigger so we will pass this into the function so we can work out well is it a character or a player that's touching the part or is it say a rock or something that's fallen on it and we don't want it to run so just inside this last bracket hit enter and you should have a function that looks like this now in this case we um, we will uh, get our character first uh, you don't have to do this but we'll do it this way so you can see how it works so local character and the character we're hoping will be hit dot parent now as I said if it's not um, this then um, we we don't want to run the code now just by getting the character doesn't necessarily mean anything but there's a special part of the character called the humanoid so we'll check to see if whatever is touching the part has a humanoid part so create a variable local uh, hum for humanoid equals and we'll say character because it'll be in the character and we'll say find first first child which is a all right so find first child which is a and we'll put in here humanoid now you could just say find first child but this is a little bit uh, clearer uh, and I'll just get rid of these over here so you can see now with that information we can write a conditional statement so if it is a humanoid and our DB value up the top is true then we will let this code run so the first thing we do is set DB to be equal to false and then down towards the end of our conditional statement we'll say our task dot wait of say um, two seconds well I'll make it one second and then we'll set DB equals true so this bit of code lets us each time the player touches this it will trigger at least once a second all right now that we've got that we can say well we know who the character is now we want to know who the player is so local player all right who is the player attached to this character equals game dot players and we will um, get player from character and we can simple simply put in here the our char um, variable that we put up here and that will get the player that is attached to the character in the workspace now remember that uh, when we ran the game before in the player we had that folder that we created so now we're going to get access to that so local pvars we'll call it in here equals player and we will wait for child so it's good to use wait for child when you are getting folders because they could contain a lot of values that take a little while to load and if you use this it will reduce the chance of having errors and you'll need to type exactly the same name that you used over here in the main script here so we are looking for the name of this folder so player vars capitalized in here okay uh, if it's not right then it won't find it and once we have that folder we can now get the player gold variable which will be inside of the folder and we can simply say find first child player gold also needs to be exactly the same as the name you put in here for gold right so we now have access to the the variable that we want to change it now we can say player gold dot value and you can write it like this so you can write p gold uh, dot value uh, plus however much you want to say so if I said 10 or 100 or whatever it is but there's a shortened way that we can do this so instead of writing all of this we can simply write plus equals and 10 okay and that will take this and add 10 to it each time this code runs okay and uh, that is all we need to do for 
to get this to work for the player. So if we come over here and you can give it a quick test if you wish. Um, if we come up here, make sure our output is here to see if we get any errors and give it a quick run. Right, so now you won't see our GUI changing yet because we haven't got to that part. However, if you run back and forward and we come over so that we can bring up our Explorer window and look under Players and look under your character name player, Player Vars, and then click on Player Gold and we'll need our Properties window, you'll see down here that that value is changing, okay? Back and forward. So each time I run on, it should change. So if that's working for you as it is, then we are ready to move on and we'll use the changed up here to change our gold variable. So stop the game running. Okay, so the last um, script that we'll add will be to our GUI. So come down to our starter GUI and to our gold label and left click on that and we're going to click on the plus and add a script to it. And we'll change the name of this to be gold uh, label script and just get rid of this now um, you don't have to do this but I'll just show you something um, so that you're aware of how this works start a GUI when you run the game actually changes its name to become player GUI and I'll show you where it appears so that way you'll understand the code in a minute so if I run the game again and we now come up to players and my character you'll see under here we have player GUI and if I expand that you'll see we have screen GUI which is the one that we created with the frame in it and then our gold label and it has our script so it's actually part of the player under this player GUI and we're going to use that to access the player and the variables in this script so I'll click on stop there and we'll come into our gold label script the first thing we need is a variable for the label itself. So label is script.parent. And just below this, now we're going to get our player in a special way. So local player will equal. And remember that I said when the game runs that um, this is a part of the player. So the uh, a parent above, like for instance, it would be from this script, uh, parent, 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 um, up to parent and then up to the next parent would be the player so that's a lot of parents and it's very confusing but there's a special method we can use and we do that by writing script and then a colon and find first ancestor okay and we'll use which is a so a big long one like that make sure it's that one and then a set of inverted commas and a player not players but player okay so it should look like that and that will get the player that is attached to this label and now that we have that just below this remember that in the player we already have our variables folder so we can grab that straight away and we don't have to do any waiting we can simply say player gold will equal player and then a dot player vars which is the folder inside the player and then player gold and that will give us access directly to that variable for us to change all right so make sure once again that it won't get any helper text here so you have to make sure that these two names match these two names in here or it won't work all right and right below this we get finally to the part uh, of using changed which is player gold dot changed so that is the event that's happening. So when this value changes, and that will happen when the player runs onto the part in the workspace, we want to connect all right, a function to this and open a set of brackets. And inside here, we can give ourselves a uh, print message initially just to say uh, changed event triggered. All right. And now we can update the label with the new um, amount so we can say label and the thing on the label we want to change is the text oops text and it will be equal to gold with a space and now we're going to uh, concatenate 
um, this value. Now, because this is a number, we need to change it to a string. So the way we do that is we put two dots, which will join a, two strings together, and we use a special um, method to string, and this will change the number value of gold to a string. So p gold dot value. And that is all we need to do in this script for this to work. So come back over here, click on File and Save, and we'll play. All right, we're in the game, ready to go, and if I run over my part, you should see a message comes up here, our print, and your amount should be changing up here in your GUI nice and smoothly, okay? And that is uh, what you can use it for. Now, just to clarify something with changed, come back over here, changed, okay, when you want to use this in another way, it can only be used with values such as this. So player gold dot value all right it will only work with something that has a value attached at the end so if you wanted to, to monitor something else like brick color um, then you would need to use a different method to do this and I won't talk about uh, the others because this is specific to this video but anything that ends in value so you have value you can use changed to monitor all right so uh, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in future videos if you found this video useful and you'd like to learn about my online courses, go to mrbrendanross.com.